Thank you, Guru Madam. Pam. New Guru Madam. Guru Madam. So we like to welcome His Holiness Swami Bhakti Vikna Vinas Narasimha Maharaj and all of you to this farm. And His Grace, uh, His Grace uh, Sita Ram. Lakshman Prabhu from Perth. So, uh, who knows what is the meaning of Godruma? What is Go? How? Druma? What is Druma? Three, three. Three. So, Godruma, so here we have a cows and then we have trees. So we opened this farm in 2013. And around 2017-18 we were having problems in the farm. We almost closed it down. Very difficult to look after a farm. Cows, trees, weather and everything, water, no water, electricity, so we have many problems and finance, so it was difficult. Because this is uh, 400 acres. That means 1.35 kilometer by 1.35 kilometer square. 1.35 kilometer by 1.35 kilometer square. That makes 400 acres. Mm, so it's very big. If you have a house and you have a small garden, how easy is it to look after the garden? That is only about 20 by 30, maximum 600, uh, 600 square feet. So, so this is very big. And now in ISKCON, not many people like to come to farm. Most are in the city. People work in the factory, people work in the offices, people work in different places, mostly everything is centered in the city. So uh, logically, naturally, that is where they get their money, so they stay in the city. But Srila Prabhupada gave many warnings about this, many, many warnings about artificial living. From as early as 66, 67, continuously, he gave warnings about the city living. So he said, you must also have farms. Every temple must have a farm associated with it. So we are doing something that we can, even though there are only a few of us here. People look after dogs, maybe two dogs at home. It's very difficult to look after a dog, maybe two dogs. So to care for cows, 87 cows, it's not easy. And and same time we must do agriculture. <coughs> and same time we must do cash crops and we must do long term crops. So with no manpower how to do? So then we have to use the bull power. 
So in Bodrumal Dam Farm, we have trees. We are growing as many coconut trees now. So the cows will graze around the trees. And then they will pass dung, pass urine and keep the grass clean. So if you see, you will see our farm, you will see many electric poles. Electric poles and electric wires. So the cow will eat around the tree but not the coconut tree. And we also save manpower because the cow lives within the electric paddocks, electric lines. So, so they are very low voltage electric lines. For us it will give a small shock, that's all. But for the cow, when the nose touch is very big, so they will respect the lines, they won't break through the fence. So our goal is to engage the cows and bulls. Gradually, they are all engaged in looking after the earth, the ground and fertilize the ground. And the dung is used for fertilizers. We have got different, different type of fertilizers which we use. There is no waste. We don't throw anything. Everything, you see that small cubicle, we do three types of fertilizers over there. Everything is put back into the waste, all waste, grass, cow, cow dung, cow urine, all. So when we live in the city, we buy our vegetables in the supermarket. So it is full of chemicals, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, so many types of poisons. And then you take it, you put it in your kitchen, and then you put it in the pot, and then you cook with bhakti. And all this poison is offered to Krishna. Is it very good? Krishna said, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam. He said, if you can offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, a flower, a leaf, a fruit, and water, I will accept it. Water is contaminated. We are drinking still water, still, you know, they don't move. It's very, not very healthy. The flower is contaminated. You're offering Krishna full of chemicals. You smell, that's it. The incense that you offer Krishna, it's full of poisons. The World Health Organization did the research that among the temples, most people were affected with cancer or people in Taiwan. The most number of people affected with cancer from poisonous uh, incense are people from Taiwan. Because they offer all this chemical incense and they inhale it and they get cancer and many other diseases. So Srila Prabhupada in his sixth or seventh uh, goals of ISKCON aims, he said that you should live a natural simple way of life.
Krishna is asking you only one leaf, only little water, only one flower in Patram Pushpam and that also we can't offer properly. But in a farm we can perform this easier. Our flowers are from our own garden. And we are having a lot of vegetables from our own garden. Our incense is from the cow dung. So we can we can do, it's not impossible. And we are trying to, Godruma Dam is trying to encourage people. Our next phase is to educate people how to grow vegetables in their house. We plan to give them our soil, we plan to give them our fertilizers, we plan to give them our seeds and then by Zoom we will teach them how to grow and that you can offer your deities at home. Similarly, the milk from the cow is tainted with blood because dairy industries means killing the cow and also taking the milk. At our farm, we take a little milk from the cow. We are not ready for dairy because when you go into dairy industry, it means the herd will expand tremendously. Until we bring our herd to about 60, then 60 or 70, then we will start dairy. Dairy, dairy means uh, milk, uh, cows which give milk and we will take milk out of the cow. For now we are just coping with the number because we got another farm in Jandabai, 20 acre and there's too many cows there. So we are trying to bring all the bulls, you can see there is a new bull barn we have built. So we are going to bring most of the bulls and then only the cows will remain there, the female, mother cows. Then we will have to see in the few years if the herd goes down, then we can start dairy milk also. So Srila Prabhupada, he wanted Krishi Goraksha Vanidyam. Krishna himself 5,000 years ago, he was doing Krishi Goraksha, he was practicing this. Not only that, right in the middle of the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he said, you must do Krishi Goraksha. He also left an instruction for all of us to do Krishi Goraksha. Krishi Goraksha, cow protection and agriculture. So he himself did and he left an instruction and then Srila Prabhupada followed up by saying hundreds and thousands of times do Krishi Goraksham and many times when Srila Prabhupada stresses something, he tells three times or in Shastra also it says three times. But when Srila Prabhupada saw they are not doing farms, he stressed four times. He said, farm, 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 at any cost. Then when they asked Srila Prabhupada, you are the farm acharya, he said, not me, it's Krishna Balaram. Krishna is the farm acharya. Farm acharya, the founder of the farm, <laughs> or in charge of farms. So, 
So not only Śrīla Prabhupāda is saying, but in the Vedic scriptures, everywhere it's written about cows. Parasara Smriti mentions that five sins you cannot escape. When you walk, you kill so many organisms. Oh, mother, you can sit. Yeah. Sorry. When you eat, you kill so many things. When you cook on the fire, you kill so many things. When you blend, you, uh, you kill so many things. So Parashara Muni said, one of the ways by which you can get away from these sins He says, Gavam Kandu Yanam Kuryat, you massage the cow. Go grasam, go grasam, you feed the cows with grass. Pradakshinam, you do circumambulation of the cow. Gosam Nityam Prasanasu Gopalapi Prasidyati, then the cow will be very happy. And Krishna will be very happy. So we come morning Mangalarati, we come to see Krishna. When Krishna wakes up, he runs to the cow barn, he goes to see the cow early morning. So there's so much to say about the cow, so much to say about land. I won't take much of your time, but it is so important. So we are doing it. It is blessed by Srila Prabhupada. Then after the difficulties we had in 2017 and reading how the cow can serve the society at large, not just by milk, not just by dung, not just by urine, but the very fact the cow functions and by religious rituals the cow blesses humanity at large. So this verse inspired me very much from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 11, Chapter 11, Text 43. This is a very interesting verse. It's a long verse. Uh, there are two parts of the verse. It's very interesting. It says, Krishna says, Suryatyu Vidyaya Traya Habishagno Yajete Mam. It says that I am present in the sun by offering incantation like uh, glorifications by Vedic mantras. And then he says, Go uh, Sangha Yavasadina. That means, I am present in the cows. If you take care of them, if you feed them with grains, grains, and uh, grass, and take care of their health and, uh, and give them all paraphernalia. So then we introduce this to many people, that they can sponsor feed for cows, and they give a small donation. You see the Hindu community at large, they are not Hare Krishna. But they do follow Vedic scriptures to a certain extent. 
at least the ritual aspect of it, ritualistic aspect. One of it is their forefathers. They do uh, 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 prayers for their forefathers, ancestors. This is also mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Then every Amavasya's dark moon. Dark moon. Or full moon, Purnima. On that day, if they sponsor feed for cows, then it's a blessing for their forefathers. So like this, many, many of our supporters are not necessarily Hare Krishna, they are from the wide community who believe in Vedic scriptures and who want to serve the cows. And this way we developed our farm after 2018 without taking one cent from any temple. Having faith in Srila Prabhupada's word. Wealth means land and cows. Yes. And then we get buses, we get opportunity to preach to people about Krishna consciousness when they come here in the weekends. So like this we are carrying out our service and we intend to put a lot of coconut trees here and vegetables and the cows graze among them, they function and then gradually we, we will have bullock carts, then we will have dairy and it will we pray to Krishna that He blesses us and the Vaishnavas that we get these blessings and we can continue with this uh, service of the farm. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Now I would like to invite His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Arshinga Maharaj to give His address. <coughs> lifestyle depending on nature.
you can see Kuala Lumpur now out they're building so many big tall high-rise buildings apartment buildings more and more people coming to the city Where are they coming from? They're coming from the countryside. And the, the result is that the countryside is being neglected. Nobody is taking care of the countryside. Some places in India, when it comes to time to plant rice, there are no people available to plant the rice. All the people have gone to work in the factory. You go to the villages, all the young people are not there. We've all gone to the city, working in the factory or some office somewhere. So the countryside is being neglected. So <coughs> we need to show an example to people how life can be very satisfying nourishing by living of nature in the countryside. Srila Prabhupada said in the villages in his days as a young boy he saw how people lived in the village. They had a small piece of land and they could grow everything they needed. And they, all, they would often have a cow and the cow would provide some milk. And in this way they could live very happily. However, with industrialization, people became more greedy. They wanted to get more money. And they sacrificed a lot just to get money. They sacrificed their health for one thing. Go to work in a factory in a very unnatural environment. Live in very crowded conditions, eat food which is very un unnatural, not, 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 uh, not properly produced in an organic manner. Yeah. Just like in Taiwan they grow fruit, but the people who grow the fruit, they will never eat the fruit because they know they use so many chemicals. And similarly in China, the people who grow the fruit and the vegetable, they're very careful not to eat it because they know they put so much chemicals in it. So nowadays you go to the shop, you want to get something healthy, they will tell you, oh, organic vegetables, organic fruit. You'll see organic and the price will be two or three times higher than the normal price. Right, 
it's going to be much more expensive. The next, the, the, it's, it's grown without any chemicals, it's grown without any pesticides, without all that thing, but the price is much greater than the original. And if you want milk, you get milk, they'll tell you this is fresh milk from Australia or New Zealand and it's been pasteurized and homogenized, it's been treated to so many chemical processes to make it long life. But if you get fresh milk from the cow, it's very healthy and it's very beneficial for people at all stages of life. Young children need milk. It's very important for their growth. They can develop a good brain by drinking cow's milk. And old people also benefit by drinking cow's milk. The milk is very important substance. In some countries, I know in England, the government will subsidize the milk just to make it to make the price lower to encourage people to drink it because it's so good for their health. So we want to try to produce things like organic foodstuffs and fresh cow's milk. These things are actually gifts of nature, but in the modern civilization, they're not available. You can get luxury cars with all kinds of microchips. You can get the latest technology. You cannot get proper milk or fresh vegetables. So there's a lot of land, land is available, it just takes people to be willing to put some labor into it and to work hard to cultivate the land. It's not easy to look off the land, it takes some hard work but it's a very healthy and very rewarding <laughs> Farming is the most pious profession. Most people today, their professions are not pious. But if you work on the land, you take care of the cows, it's a very pious thing. So Srila Prabhupada would come and visit some of the farm projects. He would come and personally visit to see to see how the devotees were farming. We like to see the devotees living in this way. I was in Europe this summer and I visited some countries like in Sweden. In Sweden they have a 
echo village there where the devotees are living. The devotees have acquired a kind of big property there with, with some forest land. And they have some cows. Not many cows, but they have regular supply of milk from the cows. And they're growing flowers and vegetables for their use. And the devotees, particularly the grihastas, those in family life, they find it very convenient to come and live there with their family. They're given a piece of land and they can, they can construct their own house. They're given some land. And they, they bring the children there, and in this way, they, they're away from the city environment. The city environment is not very healthy, and it's not conducive for spiritual life. But the children brought up in the countryside, away from the city, in the association of devotees, then they're greatly benefited. So in Sweden they have this nice farm, and then in Belgium they have also another community in a place called Brada Desh. Uh, they have a very old, big uh, palace which has been converted into a temple. Uh, make a and the devotees also acquired houses, property nearby, and they live nearby and come regularly to the temple. And they find some way to maintain themselves. One man, he was an artist and he was painting painting birds, pictures of birds, different birds on pieces of wood. He's able to sell these and he can maintain them. Someone else had made a bakery and they're baking different cake and buns and so on and they can sell them and maintain them. Some, some other people are doing internet work and they're able to get some income through their work on the internet. Different ways devotees use their initiative to find ways to support themselves. And they live together in a community. They help each other and they take care of each other. So that that is Krishna conscious that's the Krishna conscious environment. Live together in harmony with Krishna in the center. You can see in the city life, devotees are all scattered. They live in so many different areas of far away from each other. Okay, 
They don't have association regularly with devotees. They're living far away from the temple. When they come for the program, they say, oh, traffic is so bad. But they're living so far away from the temple. They should be living near, to, we should be living near to each other, we should be living together as a community. So we have communities like that, similarly in New Mayapur, in France, they have an ancient house there, an old house which has been restored and the devotees are living there and worshipping deities and having regular programs. Similarly, in Spain, devotees also have a farm. They have a big farm. The devotees are living there with each other. They have a school. They have a nice temple program. very conducive for our spiritual life, to live together, to live near the temple, and to have an association with the Buddha. And if you can live, if you have some, if you're fortunate to get some land, you can use that land to grow things like vegetables and flowers. We want to encourage that kind of lifestyle for the people. Yeah, we want to encourage living in that manner. It may be difficult in the beginning. We're not brought up in that kind of life. It takes some time to get used to it. But it's worth the trouble. And we have the greatest respect for the people who are able to dedicate their life to this kind of life. <coughs> it's very much in the mode of goodness. You live in the countryside, you're associating with the mode of goodness. You live in the city, you're associating with the mode of passion. And you live in if you live near the bar and the nightclubs and these kind of places, then you're in the mode of peace. So our living condition, our environment is very important. We need to try to make our lifestyle more natural. We should try to be more in the mode of goodness. Then, from the mode of goodness, then it's much easier to come up to the level of pure goodness. But when we're caught up in passion and ignorance, then it's a long way up to get up to pure devotion. So we're meant to cultivate the mode of goodness. 
We're meant to be in the countryside. We're meant to be knowing about nature. We want to learn how to properly live on the land in harmony with Lord Krishna. You, you get devotees nowadays, they, they don't know how to grow vegetables. They never planted a, they never planted anything, they never did any gardening. They drive a car very expertly. They're very expert using their mobile phone and computer. But they never bent to get down on the ground and plant seeds and grow plants and grow flowers and vegetables. They never took care of the cows, they never cleaned the cows, fed the cows, or milked the cows. And you get people, they think, oh, cow, cow's milk, is it, is it okay if I have camel's milk? And they want camel's milk, goat's milk. They think, oh, it's all milk, so oh, what's the difference? Yeah, there, there is a difference. Because the cow is the symbol of the mode of goodness. So the milk of the cow has very special qualities, which is not in any other milk. In India, they have a lot of buffaloes. So they, they, get, they often give you buffalo milk instead of cow's milk. And if you drink buffalo's milk, you'll end up getting a buffalo brain. <laughs> Not something we really want. We do value the cow, and we value the, the products of the cow. Very useful. The, the, the cow bird, the cow dung can be used for many things. And the cow urine, you can drink it. You can, it's a very good medicine. It's an Ayurvedic medicine, very good for the liver. If you drink the cow urine, it can become very healthy. But we are so ignorant, we don't know these things, we don't understand. But in the Ayurveda, it knows about these things, it tells you. So, in India, in our own temple in Vrindavan, they're selling different products from the cows. They're selling the medicine, they're selling the toothpaste, the soap, it's all made from the cow. It's made from the products of the cow, the urine of the cow. And the best cooking is done on cow dung. Go back. If you cook on cow dung, You'll never believe the taste that it's so wonderful. Oh, 
put cook on gas is not as good as put on alcohol. Food cooked on electricity is worse. Uh, of course, today most places are cooking on electricity. It's not the best method for cooking. But you have some cow dung. You can make a nice stove and you get a lot of heat. And you can cook very nice. So we're trying to bring back these traditional things which have been forgotten in the course of time. A lot of things in the course of time they get forgotten and we replay those things. This is better, this is more modern, this is quicker, but we lose a lot of things. So they talk about fast food. Fast food means junk food with no nutrition, no real benefit. The longer it takes to cook something, the better the value, the more nutrition will be there. But people, Kali Yuga, were so impatient. We don't have that patience to do things. We want everything to be done very quick. But you come and live in the countryside, you learn to be patient. You learn to control your mind and senses. If you're having trouble with your passion, you get angry easily and so on, it will be good for you to come and live in the country. Come and live on the land and you learn to be tolerant and patient. Work with the land. Bend down, dig the ground, get your hands a bit dirty, get your nails full of dirt. But be out there in the sunlight, in the fresh air. It is a very healthy environment. And if you're working with the cow, that's also very healthy and bad. There was one prison, there was one prison where they had some very violent prisoners who had committed murders and so on. And they were in the prison they were they going to be there for life. And they were very nasty, angry. So they were put to work with the cows, to go and clean the cow barn, to brush the cows, to feed the cows. And after they'd done this for some months, they became changed. They, they, they actually lost a lot of their passion and anger, and they became gentle. So that's the result of the association. 
associate with the mode of goodness, we will also be good and we will also come to the mode of goodness. So we will come here today to get that association with the mode of goodness. Come and see the cows and see how people are farming Christmas here. Okay, any questions?
right? The day I'm poor, I have nothing. But I, I have a checkbook. Let me write you a check. I'll give you my check. And in the future, you can go to the bank. Today, if you go to the bank, the bank will laugh at you. But in the future, I will be rich. Then you can cash your check. Right? Do you believe me? You want my check? If you take my check, you're a fool. So we get these promises from the materialistic people. The economists, the scientists, the politicians, the governments, they're speaking big things. In the future, we will do this. They're saying, in the future, everyone's going to live to be 150. Is that something to look forward to? hundred and fifty years old, could you imagine your physical condition? You cannot hear anything, cannot see anything. <laughs> What's the point to live until that time? There's no purpose. But people are thinking, oh, very wonderful, very great. In the future, we will live a long time. So the same way people are planning, they're talking about producing more and more food from less and less land. bringing the fertilizer and they're bringing all the insecticides and the pesticides and different chemicals. See, now you can grow more food. And they grow food but it's full of chemicals. It's all full of different poisons and we're taking them every day. So we should understand what is actually good for us and what is not. When I was a child, we used to drink water regularly from the tap. Today, nowhere do people drink water from the tap. Everyone's drinking this water in plastic bottles. And it's all affected by plastics. Plastics are everywhere and they're polluting everything. And we're drinking the water. So nothing is pure anymore. Nothing is healthy. It's all garbage, food, garbage environment, the air is all polluted, everything is polluted and contaminated, and we are living with the fog. Right? 
And you can see more and more disease, cancer. So many people are dying every day from cancer. Have you got any cure for this? No, they're saying in the future. Everything is promises. But we're not impressed. We're not taken in. We're not going to be tricked by their promises. We want to see what they can do now. All they do is talk. They talk very big, but the, where are the results? There's no result. So we should understand the nature of the world. How? There are simply two people. There are the cheaters and the cheating. So we don't want to be cheated any longer. We want to take our take knowledge from the scriptures, hear from the Shastra, hear from Srimad Bhagavatam. What is the real nature of life and how to live properly according to nature's plan? Krishna. So, of course, Krishna consciousness is the best. We have temples and all that. We must do that first. Then we can also, uh, side by side, we can practice this type of lifestyle even in your house. If we have uh, 100, 200 square feet of land, you can farm. You can farm in that land and then you can offer that which you farm in your land, offer it to Krishna. That all one and a half hours journey from the city if you are, you have yeah you, you say that first I think it is uh, Gandhi the Indian uh, not president, but he was a freedom fighter for civil disobedience against the British occupation. He said that God made the village and man made the city. So 
So at Rotorua Dam Farm, we say our family is a family, F-A-R-M-I-L-Y. That's how originally people lived. More people in the olden days, they lived in farms rather than the cities. So currently, practically, if you, are, if you have a Hare Krishna farm nearby, one and a half hours journey is not very long for you to come on weekends. If you don't have that, of course, I said earlier, you can farm in your house or a few devotees can get together buying two acres of land somewhere 30, 40 minutes or 50 minutes or one hour and you can also do some farming, who know, you know. When Prithu Maharaj, the cow didn't want to give, uh, mother, mother Earth did not want to give the uh, produce, didn't want to, because of the previous heinous king, uh, Mother Earth withdrew her support to humans. Uh, Prithu Maharaj uh, chastised her. Prithu Maharaj was the incarnation of God. He could have easily started farming, he could have started a fertilizer factory, he could have started a chemical fertilizer factory, he could have started an organic fertilizer factory, but he didn't do any of that. He could have done artificial farming, vertical farming, all this uh, modern type of farming. He didn't do that. He, he did what Srila Prabhupada said, natural, simple way of living. He said, Mother Earth, you must give. So if we don't respect Mother Earth, Mother Earth will not reciprocate. So his chemicals, everything, uh, nutrients are coming from Mother Earth. So Srila Prabhupada said this, he said from the hills the rain flows and all the nutrients come towards the uh, valley and the, and the plants are fertilized. So you have to make a choice. Do you want to offer chemicals to Krishna? Do you want to offer poisons to Krishna? Putana was the first demon who gave poison and we are still carrying on with Putana's program. We should get away from that program. She put milk in, the, she put poison in the milk and we are still doing that. So we should decide what, what we want. So if you got a Hare Krishna farm somewhere, you support the farm, you can ask for a few Griyastas can get together. We are easily, we are available, we can give you three acres and they can farm and then give it to the temple and give it to the Griyastas, no problem. And uh, in modern day, they are doing vertical farming, they are doing so many types of farming, you can even do it in your city if you want. So better to spend your day, the, the, pair, the, the husband of course, he can go to work, at least the wife should stay back in the house and she can do vertical farming.
we are going to do a program by which people in the apartment they can do farming. That means one family does one one type of like a brinjo, the other one can do lady's fingers. Then in that way they can butter trade. They can do it in their balconies. Inspire everyone, and then you can give that to the to the deities. You can go to the temple, give some of your produce to the deities. So, if you want to do it, you can. Just a matter of you getting together and making a plan. So that will be like a hybrid city and a farm. And then the Hare Krishna and read all of Srila Prabhupada's book and see what's written about the farm. You are living in the city. Many devotees are there. Only you. the first to do that if you can get together and do that. They say the best cook is first you, second is your mother, third is the wife. So the best is you plant and you chant, we are doing a program since we didn't do Hare Krishna Kirtan just now. So I'm inviting Maharaj to uh, initiate our program. We're going to do chant and plant. <laughs> 